the irony of this is 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 kills me. Like you know, it's really tough because uh, you know I kind of was dancing with the devil. Pain is dancing with the devil, and you just just I I don't know why I I, I did it, but like you get so far, you have put so much of your life into this. Um, I really love being a doctor and helping people. You know, you actually do save lives, or and you change people's lives dramatically. And so, um, but uh, it's just tough because I have a daughter, and I want to be able to do more with her. I want to be, you know, I'm not the dad I thought I could be, or wanted to be, like envisioned. Because I love, you know, getting on the floor and wrestling and like, you know, tossing them up and stuff like that. And I haven't been able to enjoy that part and my and she's just so full of life that you know I want to be able to you know when you know play monster and her get on my back and you know and I have to say after a while I have to say no you know I have to stop you know so it's really really hard for me okay uh, so today is um February 6th, uh, 2012, you're from Chicago, mm -hmm. right? You're a physician. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what we need to do here is we need to start out by uh, going over the history here. Um, prior to September 2009, uh, you didn't have much pain in your lower extremities, but around that time you herniated a disc, okay? Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is the pain developed over time, became quite intense in the lower extremities, and it was symmetrical. Mm -hmm. That's usually what we don't see with CRPS, okay? But it was symmetrical. And then approximately a year and a half after that, it spread into your upper extremity. Again, very symmetrical. The right is equal to the left. Mm -hmm. uh, they did the usual uh, things to treat for the diagnosis of fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. Um, medications, tricyclics, anticonvulsants, all that stuff. Along the way, about a year ago, you developed this urinary retention, okay? And uh, which, which is not something, we do see that with CRPS when it involves the lower extremities, but we don't see it that much with uh, the um, patients with fibromyalgia. So the first thing you think about is the medications may be causing it, and that's been looked at, no, it's not can't blame them on the medication. So that's the thing we're going to see what happens, what ketamine can do for, do for that. Uh, we have had patients that have fibromyalgia here, but they've also had the complex regional pain syndrome. So you're kind of like a pure, a pure, unadulterated fibromyalgia patient, okay? Now, um, they also tried some trigger point injections on you, and uh, that, uh, that didn't do um, any good. In fact, it actually aggravated your pain. Am I correct on that? Yes. Okay. So, um, so we have a picture here that has emerged more like a fibromyalgia, and, and there's really no real evidence that it follows, follows the, the accepted diagnostic criteria for complex regional pain syndrome, okay? There are some features, the spreading feature, you've had some allodynia, some sensitive skin along the way, but you know, that's it. And of course, you know, we did your pain thresholds when you first came in, and, and those pain thresholds are depressed, indicating you're just sensitive pretty much all over, okay? Now, I want to make a couple of comments about fibromyalgia because if we decide to use this for educational purposes, I think as people should understand. Basically, uh, the diagnostic criteria came about in 1990 by a group of rheumatologists, okay? And they said, well, to make the diagnosis, you have to have this uh, widespread pain, including the axillary, the, trunk, the skeletal trunk area of your body, for at least three months. And it has to be above and below your waist, not just in one part. Uh, they also said that you had to have these decreased pain thresholds. And we're going to be doing pain thresholds on using a force gauge. And we're going to be using forehead, thumbs, and your, on your feet and your toes, similar to what, what a rheumatologist would do with somebody with fibromyalgia. And as it turns out, in your case, since you, know, you have pretty good uh, function in terms of upper and lower extremities, um, we're going to... Um, uh, we're not going to be able to do much with that as far as following you on an objective basis. So the pain thresholds in your situation are probably going to be the most reliable thing we have from an objective standpoint to determine uh, your, um, uh, uh, your outcome on an objective basis. Right. Any, qu any questions from either one of you on that? No. should introduce your wife over here. She's also a physician. 
a pediatrician, right? Right. Okay, right. And uh, but what I'd like to do now is like to just stop, and I want to do some uh, some um, some testing on you from a, in terms of function. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so what we're going to do here is just demonstrate how we do the pain thresholds, all right? Straight ahead, just sitting. Mm -hmm. I get my glasses. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Now, remember, you're going to say stop mm -hmm. when the pressure turns to pain. Okay. I'm going to do a practice one first. Here goes. Stop. Okay, very good. Stop. 1.1. Stop. 1.2. Stop. And 1.3. Okay, very good. Like your hand, even your hand on the I know, side. I know. It's, it's but the thing is, I don't want your head moving. No, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. First thing we're going to do is a vertical finger test. You ready for that? Okay, uh, take your left hand. Oh, it doesn't matter, that's fine. Uh, look straight ahead, don't follow me. Mm -hmm. Put two vertical fingers in your mouth. Are you having any pain in your face when you do that? Your uh -huh. head. Okay, excellent. Uh, next thing I'm going to have you do is I want you to take that right hand, put it behind your head, sit straight, please. Are you having any pain when you do that? Yes. And what's your point where the, where you feel it? In here. Okay, good. Now do the same thing with your left side, please. Good. Are you having pain when you do that? Yes. And point to where that is. Right in that area? Okay, mm -hmm. very good, excellent. Next thing I want you to do is take your right hand out in front of you, open and close as fast as you can, fast, fast, fast. Have any pain when you're doing that? Yes. Point to where the pain is. Right on the yeah. top part there? Yep. Excellent. Now do the same with the, uh, with the left, very good. Point to where you have the pain when you do that, if you have any. No pain no. there. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, next thing I want you to, we're gonna turn our attention down to your foot. I want you to rotate your ankle uh, all the way, wiggle your toes. Okay, very good. Hitchhike back to Chicago. Get those little toes down. All right, you're gonna oh. you're gonna have to work on that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, That's a lot of people can't. A lot of people. Yeah, I know. A lot of people can't do it, so don't feel bad. Yeah. Okay. Now do your right. Please. I'm sorry. Your left. Yeah. There you go. Wiggle. Wiggle your toes. See if you can hitchhike back to Chicago. Get that big old toe up. That's all right. There you go. He's got it. He's got it. Okay. Very good. Next thing I want you to do, uh, Dr. Johnson, I want you to go stand by the door there, please. Uh huh. And I want you to take three steps toward me, please. One, two, three, and three steps back, please. Did you have any pain when you did that? Just a little in here. Around, around your greater trochanter. Greater trochanter, yeah. Okay, very the good. Pain's there most, you know, most right. all the time. But, but walking, just simple walking kind of brings it on, intensifies yeah. it. Okay, excellent, yeah. excellent. Next thing I want you to do is get up on your toes, take three steps forward on your toes, please. All right, very good. Three steps back on your toes, please. All right. Did that create more pain when you did that? No. Okay. Uh, again, uh, you're feeling most of the pain in your trochanter, but not in your yes. legs, correct? Right. Okay. Okay. Next, I want you to do your heels, please. Okay. That takes a little bit more balance. Okay. There you go. And three steps back on your heels, please. Again, what did that do for your pain? Did it make it more intense or about the same? It's same. Again, it's not in your legs you're feeling it. It's in your, in your trochanter. Right. Okay. Very good. All right. Why don't you go ahead and sit down, please? All right, I think this is a chance for us to kind of, how would you say, put a face on all of this, okay? And I'm going to turn over here to your wife, who is also a physician and knows you quite well. So why don't you tell us about, you know, how things were before this all happened way back in oh, some 26 months ago. Well, was he a very active man? Uh, yeah, extremely active, I'd say, on the very far end of active, wanting to do everything and uh, very social very athletic, very into going to, you know, music venues and um, loves music. And uh, since this has happened, he really hasn't been able to do any of the things that he used to love. Uh-huh. Okay. As well as work. Right. Well, tell us about the work. You know, as a physician, you know that's very demanding. You know, as you, as you, can, especially when you're young, it seems like you're working, work uh, with some extra hours and all that kind of thing. How did that impact on his ability to practice medicine? Uh, it, well, it, it eventually became where he couldn't work. Um, he tried very hard to stay and work um, for about a year, trying to work through the pain, um, and it eventually just became too much, and uh, he had to stop, even though he only had a year left of his uh, residency training. Right, right. That's I, that's a huge, huge uh, 
change in um, in in in, li in life uh, in, in his activities. Um, did you have anything to add to that, uh, Dr. Johnson, about what you said uh, in terms of impact? No, it's 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 been devastating. I okay. mean, I'm a very extremely I'm you know social creature, like kind of like the leader of like. Uh, of like my gang, my group, and it's just been, it's just uh, scaled back what I'm able to do tremendously. I mean, sure. I mean, it's really hard for me to leave my house now because of the urinary retention. Um, you know, I just can't go to, uh, you know, festivals, concerts, uh, basketball games, etc. like I used to be able to and organize friends. And, you know, we used to, our house used to be pretty much the center of our social universe with our friends and it's really uh we haven't yeah. been able to do that since it's like our life is on hold yeah right right i, I got it i got it okay so what we want to talk about here so because a lot of people know a lot about crps but they don't know very much about fiber out fibromyalgia so we're going to talk a little bit about that okay what is consistent with the diagnostic criteria that were developed way back in 1990 is the fact that you've had this obviously more than three months it's widespread and uh, it involves uh, both the upper and lower part of your body, and especially the axillary. area. You have to have involvement in the skeletal axillary, area, your trunk, your back, and, and so forth, and especially around the shoulders. So that's very, very consistent. The other thing that's very consistent with the diagnosis of fibromyalgia, as you know, is this t tenderness, and where you can't, t can hardly be touched. You're one of the untouchables. And the other thing that distinguishes it from, uh, from CRPS, CRPS tends to be asymmetrical, but not always. But this is a very symmetrical disease, right? Right is equal to left, pretty much up and down your body. Now, there's one other thing we should point out um, in terms of this, and that is the incident. You know, it's it's no laughing matter. They estimate that some like five million people only just in the United States have fibromyalgia, and it's far more common in women than men, like seven times approximately. Mm -hmm. But think about it: five million. That means a lot of men have it too, right? Right. Okay. Um, uh, now, one of the things that makes you, what reason why we should be very hopeful is it has to do with the pathophysiology. CRPS and fibromyalgia share some chemistry that's very, uh, very much in common. You, with both of these diseases, you get what is called central pain amplification. Okay, and um, associated with that, there are some chemical changes that are very similar. Glutamate, which is an excitatory neuropeptide, in both populations gets elevated glutamate so there's this common pathway chemistry involved also to give a little complexity to fibromyalgia patients they also get this elevation in substance p okay which is involved in pain regulation and in the uh, fibromyalgia patients there's a decrease in the norepinephrine that's the emergent as you know as a doctor that's the emergency part of your system uh, like adrenaline type type substance so we have we have some common commonalities involved here uh, between the, the two diseases. So I think there's reason for us to be hopeful that we're embarking on something here when someone just has the pure unadulterated fibromyalgia that is probably going to help you. But we don't know. And whatever we do, we're going to keep everything very objective. If we don't help you, we're going to we're going to find out. If we make you worse, we're going to find out. I think we're going to make you better. to see what happens.